The goal is to pound you to silence, right? So at the beginning it was, they were all messages of, about corruption. Bayaran, bayaran, you are corrupt, you are paid to do this. The messages took a turn for the worse. On me, it's like the way I sound, the way I look, they take anything that they believe would be a vulnerability and they just pound it. This is what going online means for Rappler CEO Maria Ressa. Since President Rodrigo Duterte sat in power in 2016, the daily attacks against her have increased exponentially. Death threats, rape threats, even racist and sexist memes. Ressa is not only threatened for being a journalist, she's also attacked for being a woman. On March 8, 2021, the International Center for Journalists released a big data analysis on the onslaught of online violence against Maria Ressa. So Maria, you know, really does sit at the intersection of viral disinformation, what we might call networked misogyny, and also um, press freedom erosion in a country run by a, a populist strongman leader. Here's what the study found. Six in every ten attacks against Ressa on Facebook and Twitter are designed to undermine her credibility as a journalist. Four in every ten attacks target her at a personal level. The only way to fight back is to not be afraid of it, right? Embrace your fear. So whatever that thing is, show it to people. Shine the light. That's the best, best vaccination against it. Because the end goal of these attacks is to dehumanize the target. That sets the stage for violence. The Philippines remains one of the most dangerous countries for journalists. In a survey of nearly 1,000 journalists in late 2020, two in every 10 female journalists experienced offline attacks that they believed originated online. Just because you are a journalist, you are not exempted from assassination. If you are a son of a bitch. The ICFJ study sees a pattern in the attacks against Ressa. These appear to be orchestrated with the use of fake and bot accounts. The attacks are triggered every time Rappler publishes an investigative piece about the Duterte administration, every time Ressa talks about disinformation and Duterte, every time Ressa appears in court, and every time Ressa wins an international award. Lots of terms, using the term liar or um, synonyms for the word liar, along with many personal insults, were used to attack the design to shut her up. What I think is really important to point out is that Maria Ressa has done the exact opposite of that. She has refused to shut up and Rappler has refused to stop reporting. These are the commonly used abusive terms against Ressa, analyzed by the study. These are amplified by hashtags aimed to undermine Ressa's reputation on Twitter. Dehumanizing language, hate speech, uh, conspiracy theories, these are the things that flow through social media, and they need to be stopped. People need to be held to account. The threats have also spilled offline. When Ressa's email and office addresses were published online, pro-Duterte social media activists came to the Rappler newsroom. An atom bomb has gone off in the information ecosystem that is now global in scope. Local is global, and global is local. The decisions in Silicon Valley impacted Filipinos. We have no say in it. For every story that holds power to account, for every day we survive, for every time we avoid cynicism. We are Rappler and we will hold the line. While Ressa welcomes the international support, she says tech companies have to be accountable to fix the problem. Technology, social media, it has killed democracy in the Philippines. The violence online, the toxicity has just got to be stopped. 
And the best way to do that is to hold the social media platforms to account. Mark Zuckerberg should be accountable. Despite the attacks, Russia's biggest concern remains the broader impact for society and democracy. This is an existential moment. We're looking into the abyss, and your generation is going to have to figure out how valuable is democracy? You know, what kind of world do you want to live in? And if you want democracy to survive, we're all going to have to do more. Thank you.